Hi guys, we're going to be jumping into the Christmas portion of our Q4 series. This episode will actually be broken into two episodes where we go over 10 things on our holiday checklist, our Q4 checklist for our shops. Today we're gonna to hit one through five on that checklist and next time we'll hit six through 10. You will definitely wanna go ahead and hit the subscribe button real quick so you do not miss that. And if you're a regular around here and you're enjoying this holiday series, take a second and smash that like button. If you missed our Halloween or Thanksgiving episodes, I will link the playlist down below so you can have quick access. If you are watching this in August when it is released and wondering if it is too early to start your Christmas listings, no, why no, it is definitely not. I have actually been listening for Christmas since early July and I am making it more of a focus of my listings as we get closer and closer. In fact, I have been practically begging my friends and family that are doing Etsy to list for Christmas. As I watch everyone really struggle with consistency here, I know it's hard to see the importance when it seems we are preparing so early, but we are not early, we are just on time, especially if you're a newer shop. I could teach an entire lesson in these, just ask my former fourth graders, but I don't wanna distract you from the content, I do that enough with our little Tucker. As a new or newer shop, you need even more to get your listings out early and to consistently keep listing them right until the deadline, which for me is Black Friday weekend. I suggest listing all the way up until then. Now, wait a second, I know what my procrastinators just heard. All they heard was that they have tons of time and that is not the takeaway from that sentence. I know this because I myself have often been accused of being a procrastinator and I know my first year in this business, that's kind of the concept I had. Oh, I've got time, they're saying I have until this, until this day. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to be jumping in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks before these deadlines and expect that you're going to be able to make any considerable amount of sales, if any at all. If you are listening to this content when it comes out or at least earlier than November, then you have no excuse to get started late. You wanna make sure you get started on time. But if you have been listening consistently up until then, I do suggest taking it right to that Black Friday weekend. The main focus of this video is going to be a checklist of things that you need to make sure are ready in your shop and you should start getting them ready now. There are 10 things on this checklist. If you're anxious to get to that checklist, you could skip ahead to minute eight. Otherwise, stick around for a couple of tidbits I think that you'll appreciate hearing. Quick story for you, and if this doesn't motivate you, I don't know what would. I opened my shop in October, didn't see much success at all during that Q4. I was just too late and didn't know what I was doing even with the listings I was putting out there. Made tons of mistakes. The following year, my shop had gotten off to a slow start and I didn't start making money until the latter part of the year. And there we were coming up to Q4. I had made lots of money in the teacher niche during the summer, at least what I consider to be a lot at that time. Took a bit of a nosedive during October because I wasn't quite prepared for Halloween, although I did make some Halloween sales. And then I was cranking out the Christmas designs the best I knew how. It was late November, about a week before Thanksgiving, and I had decided, okay, I know that anything new at this point going out is probably too late. So I need to figure out what to do next. I was listening to my mentors on YouTube that afternoon on my way home, and the voice on the other side of that Jeep radio said, I implore you to keep listing Christmas. I implore you to keep doing that right up until Black Friday. And so on my little drive home, as I was trying to figure out what I'd be working in that afternoon and was ready to kiss goodbye, the Christmas stuff, he said to work on Christmas. So Christmas I was going to work on. I got home in that week, I went into my shop, I was looking at what was doing well, making decisions based off of that and put something out there Black Friday weekend. That one listing made me half the money that I made during that holiday season, $6,000. Between that Black Friday and the next 
two or three weeks before the cutoff dates for ordering in time for Christmas came up. $6,000 from that one listing because I followed that one piece of advice. That year, I really didn't do any Christmas during July or August. I might have done a little bit during September, but I was still so focused on Halloween at that time and didn't really turn my attention to Christmas until really October. I was actually a bit behind the mark because the focus was not what it should have been until we got closer and closer to the holiday. Yet I still managed to do well, but that begs the question, what could have been had I gotten my listing schedule down a bit better? And then going into last year, I did just that and had an incredible Q4 season. Listening early is important and we will get into just why in just a bit. In this video, we're going to go over a checklist of things you need to start checking off now. So don't wait until October to start working on this list. This is so we can all have a successful Q4 setting ourselves up for the best possible scenario. Before we get into it, I really wanted to share the fortune that I got in my fortune cookie yesterday. I thought it could not be more perfect. I've already texted it to all my friends and family members that are working on Etsy to encourage them to keep going and to be consistent. Today's profits are yesterday's goods well ripened. This is going on my computer so I can look at it often. Another quote I think is super powerful here and I find myself reciting often is, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Make a plan and accept nothing less from yourself than to stick with it. If you do feel overwhelmed and need more direction than what a video can give you, you need something tangible in your hands to look at, I did create a Q4 resource that has a ton of information to keep you on the right path. You will get listing dates, which is super duper important, ideas for profitable products, ideas on how to niche down, cross niching ideas, popular activities enjoyed during Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas to help you design for those types of activities, customers you should be targeting, and even some scalable phrases you can use. I will leave a link to that down in the description below. If you have purchased that and you are using it, let us know how it's going. Are you finding it helpful? Is it nice to have something, a download on your computer to look at or something you can print out and have tangibly in your hands to mark off on? I will also leave a link to Cassie Johnson's course in the description. My friends and I are currently going through this course together. This is the third course I have personally put myself through and I think it is excellent. Investing some of my earnings in resources and in educational materials such as courses is one of the ways that I've learned enough to go ahead and help my shop scale faster and grow it quicker. I came into this not having any business background, so this was something that was such an important piece in my building the knowledge I needed, being able to move things forward. If that's not in the cards right now though, then that is okay because you have so much free content on YouTube. Just make sure that you are feeding yourself that content every day so you can learn as much as possible. Time to get to our Q4 checklist. Let's do this. Number one, be ready for the increase in orders. I already told you about that year where I listed right up until Black Friday and that one item just took off and I made $6,000 profit from it. That means that I was paying the POD company quite a bit of money to fulfill those items. In all, I made right around $12,000 profit. I had my account set up. I would get paid weekly, try to pay the credit card company that I was using, and I was unable to keep up with this. The credit card was maxing out. I can't even tell you what a good problem it really was. I remember being incredibly excited that the, the orders were just flying in so quickly. And I was lucky because I had a couple of credit cards that I was able to start swapping between. I was getting nervous and I was reaching out and applying for a new credit card, but that doesn't happen right away. It takes a, a little bit to be approved for that new line of credit. So you really want to make sure that you start doing that now. 
I do have an entire video where I go into exactly which credit cards I use. I've purposely chosen credit cards that give me the best rewards for my POD purchases, for that spending category. You get different kinds of rewards for different spending categories with different credit cards. So you need to do some research on that to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck with that. I made somewhere in the neighborhood of $7,000 extra money through these credit cards last year. This year, with a very modest projection, I'm thinking $12,000. I'm really thinking it's going to be more than that, but I'm just going to go with the modest projection right now. That'll be an extra $12,000 free money in rewards that I get through these credit cards. So definitely start thinking about that now. You might be able to apply for something now and then wait a couple months, apply for another one as we get closer to the holiday season so that you have some backups. If you already have some credit cards, this might be a good time to start thinking about an increase and see if you are approved for an increase in the line of credit that you're getting. Again, I did do an entire video about that. I will leave that down in the description. I also did another video where we went to the Keys with the family and most, a lot of that trip was paid for with those credit card rewards. So either do some of your own research or you can rely on the research I've done thus far by watching those videos. I will also leave a link down in the description to the credit cards that I use as some of them have some nice bonuses when you sign up. For anyone feeling nervous right now because maybe you don't have a credit card or credit cards with very high lines of credit on them, do not get scared off right now. There are other options that you can explore. So you might want to think about starting a savings account now where you're going to be saving up between now and where we are hoping we're gonna get those Q4 sales so you have a buffer there. You might want to look into getting a small loan and not doing anything with that now but having that knowledge for later in case your shop does scale and you wind up making a lot of sales. Worst case scenario, you can slow the sales down in your shop by raising your prices and or pushing your shipping dates further out. Hopefully it won't come to that and you'll be able to pay the POD company so you can keep business moving. But being afraid of this happening is not an excuse not to go for it with everything you've got. This is how you change things in your life. Where there is a will, there is a way, and coming out of the Christmas season, if you are finding yourself in any of those scenarios, coming out of the Christmas season or the Q4 season, you'll be in a whole new place, not only with the opportunity your shop presents by the momentum you've gained, but the revenue and the profits that you've created to help you with your future savings. Notice I didn't mention here as an option of putting your shop on vacation mode. That would be last, last, last resort because I have never personally put my shop on vacation mode, but I have heard people speak about it and it, lo it would seem you're completely disappearing from search results and you can really slow down in the algorithm and really hurt your momentum by doing that. By using strategies like raising your prices and or pushing out your shipping dates to make your shop a little less desirable to purchase from, would be better because at least then your items are still working in the algorithm, they're coming up in search results, they're getting interacted with, and this would be less of a hit for your shop. Before we move on to tip number two, I just wanna make sure, probably should have led with this, if anyone is confused about how this system works, you open your shop on Etsy, a customer pays for that item, they are paying Etsy. Once a week, at least that's what mine is set to, and that's usually what it's automatically set to, Etsy pays you. In the meantime, you're working with a POD company. You're paying the POD company for that item and to send it out. You're the middle person and you are getting paid from Etsy and you are paying the POD company. Etsy is not paying the POD company. It's your business, you are the one responsible for paying the POD company. So one of the other things you can do to prepare for the holiday sales if you're worried that you're going to scale and not be able to keep up with the cost of fulfilling through your PDO company is you can actually request that Etsy pay you daily. Next up on our checklist, number two, we're going to take advantage of being a part of the Etsy holiday sales events. I don't think the dates or the criteria are out there yet 
for 2023, but keep an ear and an eye open for more information on this to come, I'm sure very soon. The advantage of participating in their sales event is that they will be promoting those listings. Last year, if you wanted to participate, you had to put your listings on sale for at least 20% off for certain dates. It happened to be last year, October 24th through November 17th. And then you had to schedule your cyber sale for November 18th through the 30th. So you had to have a sale running in your shop for those days and it had to be at least 20%. Number three, be sure to just kind of reference the Etsy handbook and know what's allowed and know what's not allowed. Last holiday season, it came out that you could not use the word pajamas in your SEO, your title or your tags or market your t-shirts as pajamas or pajama tops. If you had children's sizes available or a word referring to children in your title or your tags. In this example, the seller is using the word PJs in their SEO, their title and their tags. And you'll see toward the bottom of the drop down menu there, they've got toddler sizes and baby sizes available. And as I understand it, unfortunately, there was a very sad event that resulted in a child's death. And that did spark a lawsuit against Etsy because of something similar to this, where someone was selling something that was sleepwear. The child was harmed while wearing it while sleeping. But because nothing had happened and Etsy wasn't cracking down on that, a lot of people were able to use the word pajamas for their shirts and include those children's sizes. So pajamas is a great word, it's a great keyword, but you can't use it in reference to children. Another way to keep yourself in the know on that is just to make sure you're listening to your favorite YouTubers, as that is constantly something YouTubers are bringing to others' attentions when they have had it brought to their attention. So again, they just started cracking down on that last year, and a lot of listings got taken down because of that. You cannot get the listing reinstated, so if you were making nice sales with it, it's just, it's gone, and you can't edit it and put it back up. It's just gone. So best to just make sure that you're putting the listings out with this guideline or this rule in mind so you, didn't get, you don't get caught up in that this year. Number four, use some great mock-ups. For me personally, I have a couple of mock-ups that I use quite often, and they are not themed at all. But for the holidays, especially Christmas, I did invest in Christmas mock-ups. I did the same for Halloween. These are just really big moments to be selling, really big profitable times to be selling. And to help yourself stand out, having those holiday themed mock-ups can help. You really want to create a vibe, create a feeling within your customer that makes them feel like they're participating in the joy of that holiday before they ever even have it in their hands. That's going to help them with this purchase. Also with that in mind, make sure that they can't get confused by the photo. There are some really cute photos with the pajamas present in the photo. Of course, you don't want to offer those ones to children, but they are adorable mock-ups that really create that vibe of picturing yourself with your holiday shirt on. However, customers can get confused if they see something like pajama bottoms in the photo. They could get confused and think that they're going to receive the pajama bottoms, especially if you have used the word pajamas in your title and in your tags. So just be mindful of things like that and you may need to write on the mock-up itself, shirts only or bottoms not included, something like that so that this is very clear to your customers. Number five, trademarks. You wanna make sure you're checking on your trademarks. I do have this video here that I will link down in the description below if you need help with understanding how to check your trademarks. Also, if anyone has an interesting tidbit to add to this about trademarks, go down into our comments and let us know what it is. There are some crazy trademarks out there. Someone did share with me last year, I haven't double checked this, but the red nose on a reindeer is actually trademarked according to what someone shared with me last year. 
There are a lot of phrases that are trademarked, so best to check those, especially for the holidays. You don't want to be getting caught up with all of that craziness and having listen, listings taken down. It should be a part of your regular practice before you're putting things on shirts or including those phrases in your title or your tags to just go on uspto.gov and double check that it's allowed and not trademarked for the item that you are wanting to sell it on. Mistakes happen and things are bound to slip through your fingers here and there from time to time but you just really wanna do your best to protect yourself and your shop. That's one through five on our holiday checklist, our Q4 checklist. Tucker, take it away.